Greetings, happy warriors, and thank you for being part of the Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show, where I, your rabbi, reveal how the world really works. Thank you for being part of the show. I appreciate all that you have been doing to gain us audience, to gain us listeners, and above all, to gain us subscribers. Yes, so if that's something you haven't yet done, please go ahead and uh, do the subscribe thing right away. Because this is an important show. It's a public service show. Because there's been a lot of talk lately. I mean, it's not just the Chinese spy balloon, but there have been repeated attempts on the part of various people to persuade others that they have seen unidentified flying objects. And there is this, this deep yearning that people seem to have to want to know that we're not alone in the universe and that somehow if we raise our eyes to the heavens, we will receive a message. There's something vaguely <laughs> theological and religious about that desire, isn't it? I mean, is it, is it that more preposterous than, uh, than saying, you know, maybe there's people living underground you know, maybe the uh, maybe they're Nibelung living deep beneath the surface of the... No, we've got to raise our eyes upwards to the heavens and there we shall find wise people who will teach us important things. Well, there's just a lot of controversy about this, you know. Is there intelligent life in outer space or isn't there? Uh, is there such a thing as aliens? Is it possible that walking among us on the earth at the moment, and here you can cue the ghostly kind of music, whatever you prefer, whatever works best for you, you know, that uh, quavering type of sound, maybe an oboe in the background, uh, that, that's the sort of music that uh, we should have here because maybe they walk among us. Some people scoff at the notion that there are aliens among us. Other people are confident there are. Most people just don't think about it and don't have an opinion, which is what makes this show so important, because it falls to my shoulders to bear the burden of sharing what really is happening. And so I hope that I won't shock you too much but there is a payoff for being part of the Rabbi Daniel Lappin show, and that is you very often hear things before other people hear them. You know, for instance, um, San Diego, the port of San Diego, has just acquired a battery-powered tug. Now, tugs are hugely powerful boats. They tend to have... Uh, colossal propellers. So if a tug is a 90 foot long tug, typically, uh, you know, imagine a 90 foot long fishing vessel, and it might have a, a four or five foot diameter propeller, maybe a 50 or 60 inch diameter propeller beneath the, uh, the surface of the water, driving it along. Well, a tugboat is going to have two propellers. They are usually steerable propellers, and they are, in fact, going to be uh, more like 10 feet in diameter. They're huge. And they are driven invariably by large, powerful diesel engines. And they run and run and run, so much so that very often during the course of a busy workday, a tug doesn't even shut down its diesels, even if it has an hour between missions. It's just brought a ship to the dock. In an hour, it's going to be helping a ship depart. They very often don't even shut down the diesels because uh, they're, they're quite hard to, you know, it takes energy to start them, takes time. This way, they just keep them running, and they're so reliable. They so just keep, and they're also very, very economical. So uh, with all that notwithstanding, they've now come up with an electric tug. 
not as powerful, it can't work as long. Diesel, uh, diesel-powered regular tugs can cross oceans. There are tugs that do ocean salvage, and that's how much range they have. They're able to cover 3,000 miles. Uh, it goes without saying that the battery-driven tug uh, can do about 100 miles before it needs a recharge. Depending on what it's pushing or pulling, it may be considerably less. might be more like about 30 miles. So, uh, nonetheless, the uh, Port of San Diego has done that using, guess what, government money. That's right, Crowley Tugs, the West Coast tug company uh, that operates from Seattle to San Diego, Uh, They are using government money that paid for this tug and the charging infrastructure that had to be installed alongside the dock. Now, this reminds me a lot of the various school districts that have gone to great expense, usually again with your taxpayer money, uh, to replace their diesel buses with electric buses. So the children should not have to go to school with polluting buses that are destroying, is it the ozone layer or? Mm, no, I think it's the, this would be climate change. Hard to keep up. At any rate, uh, I'm pretty sure that in spite of the tremendous brouhaha and the celebrations and the jubilation when these school districts installed electric buses, Uh, None of them are actually using them anymore because they don't last. They break. They don't work properly. (laughs) They need to be recharged in the middle of a route. And so, as I said, uh, remember that one of the rewards of being a subscriber to the Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show is that you often hear things before they are freely available out there in general. So here, uh, let me assure you that it won't be long. I can't predict exact timing, but I do predict that it won't be long before the electric tug in the port of San Diego uh, is no longer in service. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, You know, you heard a lot about electric airplanes. Do you remember that? If you were already listening to the show, you again got advanced information I just want to try and convey to you the value that I try to bring to you, the happy warriors that listen to the Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show. And so if you were listening a few years ago, when all the talk was about electric airplanes and they were going to do the, uh, the small airplane commuter routes, all going to be operated by electric battery-driven airplanes, what did you hear from your rabbi? What did I tell you? I told you it ain't going to happen, not in our lifetimes, not going to happen. And I gave the reasons, the reasons, scientific reasons, because I believe that science is accurately a, uh, a depiction of reality. I don't believe in scientists because scientists are human beings just like everyone else, and they are susceptible to threats and blandishments. There are threats about losing or be having their careers damaged, and there are uh, bribes in the form of vast government grants for their labs and for their work. Scientists are just like everyone else. I don't believe scientists. I don't believe rabbis or priests. I believe in the underlying systems, but um, uh, scientists... Right, science would tell, yeah, these things, these airplanes are going to fly, these batteries. They were all the research, all the manufacturing, all the work was being done with your tax money. And so obviously they put out optimistic sounding projects. Oh, this is going really well. We've run another test flight today. Not with anybody on board. Okay, I told you at the time, it's not going to work. The science does not bear it out. But the government put a finger on the scale by making available significant sums of money uh, in order to promote electric airplanes. Well, the money's run out and there are no electric airplanes. The market is not producing them because it can't. And so, uh, remember, I I gave you that advanced information. You see, this is part of the value. (laughs) 
I've got to be careful not to overdo this, right? But this is part of the value of the Rabbi Daniel Lappin show, that you hear things before others do. But what is true, what is serious, though, by the way, uh, the tug in San Diego has just come into service. It's not going to be working for very long. Like all these other electrical large-scale devices, uh, they're not going to work. But here's what I also predict. It's going to be very hard to find reports in the media about the, uh, uh, the uh, Crowley tug in the Port of San Diego, the battery-driven tug, being taken out of service. You, it's going to happen. You probably are going to have to dig for the information because the media is largely made up of beings that do not want to share news that goes contrary to the official belief. The official belief is that uh, burning fossil fuels is destroying uh, the, uh, it, it's producing too much carbon and that's heating up the planet and that's going to melt glaciers and the water levels are rising and the oceans are rising. None of that is, is true. I mean, you know, show, me, show me a picture of a hundred year old waterfront statue or a hundred year old waterfront seawall and show me at comparable levels of the tide that it is even an inch more than it was a hundred years ago. It's simply not happening. That's why you don't see comparable pictures. They don't exist. And uh, in exactly the same way, uh, you will not hear that the tug has been taken out of service, but I'm letting you know in advance it is going to be taken out of service. So today I am finally going to disclose the truth on alien life. I'm finally going to disclose after all the controversy and all the backwards and forwards and all the opposing viewpoints, I today, for the happy warriors listening to the Rabbi Daniel Lappin show, I today I'm going to share the truth on what is really happening in the world of UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Well, more about the occupants. I'm going to speak more about whether or not there are really aliens among us. Is there intelligent life from another planet actually around you, in your city, wherever you are, could there be representatives of alien life forms from another planet, far, far away, walking among us? The answer is yes, there are actually aliens on planet Earth. There really are. And I am going to teach you how to identify them and uh, how to protect yourself. Because in many ways, they are more dangerous than zombies. For one thing, they actually exist. Whereas with zombies, well, there's some doubt, isn't there? But the aliens, oh yeah, they have arrived. And they really are among us. But um, I want to tell you about a couple of things first. Um, in uh, a little over a month, in May, on the 23rd of May, I'm going to be speaking in Orlando. Now, many, many, many happy warriors live in Florida. Many happy warriors have moved to Florida in the last five years. And so I know that there are many happy warriors within driving distance of Orlando, Florida. And that's where I'm going to be appearing on May 23rd, on Thursday, May 23rd. And um, I would love to meet you, and I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, this is a conference put on by my good friend Jim Cockrum. It's called The Proven, as in to prove something. It's like I'm going to prove to you that you can spot aliens, prove the Proven Conference. Proven Conference has nothing to do with aliens. I'll come back to aliens in a moment. But um, 
what uh, the Proven Conference does is it does something, well, I, I think of it in many ways as fighting inflation because it enables you to increase the money you earn. It enables you to start a side gig, to create a small business, to start something that could become big. Um, it is a wonderful conference for people who want to make more money. It's as simple as that. No ifs, ands, and buts, no apologies, no caveats. Well, given that we don't want to sound too greedy, n this has nothing to do with greed. It has to do with serving God's other children. It has to do with acquiring a delight and a pleasure. Awful. Okay. All right. Um, I should absolutely make sure that that does not happen. I'm sorry. I'm certainly, certainly going to try. Anyways, my apologies that uh, really it should be edited out, but um, I, I pretty much try. We don't do a whole lot of editing. We really try and give you the show as the ideas um, emerge from my, my thoughts and from my mouth and, uh, and occasionally, anyways, uh, apologies for all of that. And so, um, the, the proven conference, and that's what you make a note of this, www, go to on the web, theprovenconference.com slash Lappin, L-A-P-I-N. The reason I say that is because there is a special deal available for happy warriors to uh, attend the conference and uh, for us to have a chance to shake hands and get to know one another and for you to benefit not only from what I'm going to be teaching on Thursday morning, May 23rd in Orlando, Florida, but you're going to be able to benefit from an amazing range of speakers who actually have done and are doing what they will be teaching you to do in terms of creating your own online business. I wouldn't associate it with it. I wouldn't associate myself with it and my name with it if it wasn't something that I felt very strongly about. Uh, I, I feel that uh, it is, it, it, its credibility level is very strong, its integrity level is very strong, and uh, that everybody, pretty much everybody, can really benefit. If you are interested in acknowledging the reality of inflation, that's how I look at it, Inflation over the last three years, 18% minimum in real terms, taking into account uh, cost of purchasing a house, not rent, but purchasing, taking into account fuel, food, things like that, uh, the cost of living, basically, and, and one could even develop it a little bit further. In other words, if, if you did a calculation three years ago of how much money you need to take care of your needs for the next, shall we say, 20 years. And you did that calculation now, shall we say, for the next 20 years or 17 years, um, you're going to find at least probably more than an 18% increase. Inflation is horrible. It's, uh, it's the result of immoral behavior on the part of a government. Uh, and it always is. It's, it's nothing short of printing money. Uh, when that amount of value has not been created in the economy. And I've done previous shows. You can find older um, podcasts where I've discussed that and explained it in, in full. But for now, at least, um, to, to, to be aware that the only reliable way of coping with it is to increase your revenue by 18%. Do that, and you can laugh at inflation particularly if you do it with a business that will grow and keep up with inflation, which is not about to end just yet. And so uh, I, I'm a big believer in starting a side business, no matter what you do, starting a side business and theprovenconference.com slash Lappin, theprovenconference.com slash Lappin is the way to start and see you in Orlando in... Um, towards the end of May, May 23rd. So let's, um, let's, let's make sure that that's available. You know about that. I also want to mention that uh, 
Passover begins in uh, just a few days for me, and um, it, it begins uh, the 22nd of April, and uh, and that means that at, in terms of our website, in terms of our store, in terms of my availability, uh, a lot is cut back because my attention will be focused on this annual inoculation, which is what the Passover celebration is. Um, so at any rate, in order to um, uh, sort of uh, accommodate that, we have the pros financial prosperity collection. This is a 10-part um, audio, uh, visual and audio program. It's a video uh, where I give 10 hours of lecturing on the principles of Thou Shall Prosper, the principles of business secrets from the Bible, the principles of the holistic you, and I lay out everything needed to know. And I must say, taken in conjunction with the Proven Conference, um, I think anybody who's serious about changing their financial destiny, anyone who's serious about really starting to banish the spiritual schematic of scarcity and replace it with a spiritual schematic of abundance, the Financial Prosperity Collection, and next month, if you're anywhere near the southeast of the United States, Orlando particularly, uh, the Proven Conference. Uh, the Financial Prosperity Collection is on the website, rabbidaniellappin.com, $50 off during the Passover holidays. And um, uh, finally, I just want to also remind you that uh, if you want to be part of a community of happy warriors, where not only do you get a chance to be helped and inspired and guided by happy warriors who might be a little ahead of the journey than you, uh, but you, even more importantly, I think, get a chance to help someone else because being a giver is much more valuable than being a taker. It does much more for your soul. It, it does much more for enlarging your entire perspective, which when you get right down to it is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that you want to change your uh, spiritual schematic from a scarcity model to an abundance model. Um, I once helped somebody, um, I connected them. They had a small business and it was clear as, as they consulted with me, it was clear to me that what they needed was professional help in the area of online marketing. And uh, I wanted to explain to them that the success of their business, given what where they were at, was not the product they were selling. That was a small part of it. They were thinking that the product is you know, 80% of the secret and 20% of it is the marketing. It's really the other way around. Uh, the product, in their case, was 20% of, of their success. 80% was more. I introduced them to somebody marketing, and I sat in on the first couple of meetings. And uh, this woman was fantastic. I mean, she just laid out exactly where this was going. And you know what the person's first reaction was? He turned half turned to me where I was sitting, and he said, I'm not sure I'll be able to, this is so good, this advertising is going to work, I'm not sure I'll be able to cope with the rush of customers it's going to bring. And I said, there you go, that is a spiritual schematic of scarcity. You are seeing frightening forces at work called success. Many of us are susceptible to it. I deal with that in the Financial Prosperity Collection. I deal with that in, uh, I will deal with that at the Proven Conference. And um, it is something that you yourself can do a lot about by becoming more of a giver than a taker. And becoming part of the Happy Warrior community means that you can lavish of yourself on other Happy Warriors who need encouragement, who need guidance, who need advice. And, um, well, that's, that's how a genuine community works. So back to the reality of aliens walking among us on planet Earth. Yes, there are aliens. You may as well get used to that. Um, don't let it terrify you because we're going to talk about how to identify them and we're going to talk about how to protect yourself from them. Um, okay, so um, some of the ways we can 
recognize the aliens from another planet who walk among us right here in my town, in your town, intelligent life. Yes, it is intelligent life. That's what makes it scary from another planet, all among us. They're not easy to recognize, I'll tell you that, but it's possible. But what's interesting is, strangely enough, they all recognize one another and they bond very closely with one another. Um, I will tell you that um, I say they're dangerous, but that's mainly because they are very confrontational. Do you see what I mean? Happy warriors, by nature, are not confrontational. We happy warriors are kind of leave-us-alone people. Just live and let live. You know, do whatever makes you happy. Don't bother us and let us do what makes us happy. Please just leave us alone. Happy warriors are not in the face of other people telling other people how to live or what to do. We're just, we, we don't do that. Um, you, you might say that we happy warriors are, um, uh, are a key part of the Leave Us Alone coalition. And I think that in the United States of America, that is an increasingly strong coalition. It's one that I think could really swing the 2024 election. Just leave us alone. Who are they talking to? Well, a lot of the time, when we say, please just leave us alone, we're talking to aliens. The aliens among us. Yes. So we've got to, got to be aware of that. <laughs> they, they're right here. Um, the aliens among us first betrayed themselves in early 2020. If you saw somebody driving alone in their car, wearing a mask over their face, that was an alien. Yeah. So back in 2020, it was really easy to spot aliens. It was very, very helpful. Um, let's imagine you you were crossing a parking lot to go into a store. Big, open air, empty parking lot. And um, somebody got in your face telling you to put on your mask. That was an alien. You see, there are ways to spot them, even though they are masterful at blending into the population and making themselves appear an innocuous part of the people everywhere else. But they're not. They're aliens. Um, you know, let's say you... Uh, you mentioned to somebody that your wife has just given birth to your first baby boy. Most people are going to surround you with happy congratulations. But if there's somebody who comes up to you and says, how do you know it's a boy? That is an alien. You see, they do give themselves away. They do betray them. And, and here's the great thing about aliens. An alien can spot a racist, a homophobe, a white supremacist, a transphobe, a gun nut, and a climate denier from a distance of 14,000 yards. Gosh, these aliens are good. But they cannot tell you whether a person standing right in front of them is a man or a woman. Aliens even know what's in your mind. They know what you're thinking. Aliens know what you're thinking, and they'll very often rudely confront you with that. But they don't know if you're a man or a woman. So that's one of the ways you can always spot an alien. Another way to spot an alien is that uh, aliens are generally utterly incapable of changing a tire on a car. If an alien is driving down the road, gets a flat tire, 
his tool of choice is a cell phone. He doesn't know what a scissor jack is. He doesn't even know if there's one in his car. He doesn't know where the spare tire is located. And if he did, he wouldn't be able to get the old tire off because he doesn't know what a lug wrench is. So that's another good way to know you can always spot an alien. Now, there's another way to spot an alien. This is very subtle. Um, this is subtle. But if you see people who exhibit no amazement at all, never, that when you flick on a switch on the wall, darkness is banished and the room is filled with light. That's an alien. If you turn on a faucet and a stream of limitless, cool, clear, clean water flows from that, and there's no sense of amazement at all, probably an alien. You see, that's because human beings from planet Earth, we happy warriors for sure, do understand what it takes for that light to come on when you press the switch. We get it. It requires huge cooperation between lots and lots of different people, engineers, um, fuel delivery, uh, logis log logistics specialists. It takes so much to build a power station. It, so it takes so much to run a power station. It takes so much to make sure transformers remain in operation and power cables and transmission lines remain. It takes so much. And this is one of the reasons that countries that are sliding down the road to hopelessness and doom end up, or before they end up, um, they have electricity outages. Countries like South Africa, where for many, many, many years, reliable electricity, absolutely reliable, any time of the day or night. Now, not so much. Places like California, right, not such reliable electricity. Those are indications that countries that are unable to deliver reliable electricity, well, they're on the way out. Happy warriors really understand a little bit about what it takes, and they recognize it as a miracle every time you turn on a switch and the light goes on. But not aliens. Aliens have no idea at all. They're utterly oblivious. Happy warriors understand what it takes to bring clean, fresh water to a faucet. They understand. You think it's easy? Reservoirs, filtering plants, dams, pumps, pipes, all of this. It's, it, and it takes large numbers of human beings invisibly collaborating seamlessly with one another. Everybody doing his little part of the puzzle to make the whole thing work. It's a miracle. It's wonderful. It's a thrill to me every time I turn on the faucet. In countries that are sliding down the road to doom, water supply is neither clean nor reliable. That's why we're amazed. Aliens, not amazed. Because they have no idea what it takes. They don't know what goes on behind the wall, where the pipe goes into the wall. What happens then? Not a clue. It's another way to spot aliens. Um, so, um, I should probably give you just maybe a few more, a few more ways to spot aliens. Aliens can be spotted because they live in constant fear of things that never hurt anybody. Get it? Now, happy warriors might be fearful, but they're fearful of things that can really hurt. Aliens, no. They're frightened of things like rising sea level. Hasn't hurt anybody. But aliens will get in your face about that, going back to another way to spot them. You remember I told you they're confrontational? Right. I'm a happy warrior. 
I don't think the oceans are rising, but you want to believe they are, please sell me your re oceanfront real estate at a discount. That's, that's as much as I'll ask you. Beyond that, have your beliefs. Live and let live. Just leave me alone. But aliens are confrontational. They get upset if you don't accept their beliefs. The beliefs of the planet they come from, they are evangelical about it. They want to spread them, and they are just like medieval torturers of the Spanish Inquisition. They want to punish you if you don't accept the right faith. These are all ways you spot the aliens. Uh, aliens are terrified of overpopulation. Too many people. The reality is that the opposite problem is actually striking most countries around the world today. But that makes no difference to aliens. Because aliens will always talk about science, but they actually don't believe in science. If science says something they don't believe in, their beliefs trump. Their beliefs take precedence. Which is shocking, but it's another way. And it's a good thing because it, it helps us identify aliens. Um, uh, climate change, warming temperatures, all of these things haven't hurt a soul. But aliens are really frightened of all these things. But things that really do hurt people, aliens are not frightened of. So uh, pro-criminal justice systems that encourage crime against ordinary people. Aliens are not worried about that. By Soros arranged district attorneys, by George Soros, making cities unlivable because of the crime. Aliens, not frightened of that one little bit. They have no fear of violent Islamists. That's another interesting thing about aliens. Violent Islamists kill people, lots of people, in lots of places. Canada, America, United Kingdom, Nigeria, Kenya, Indonesia, lots of places. And uh, aliens have no fear whatsoever. They're just not scared of violent Islamists. Another thing that really hurts people is inflation. Aliens are not scared of inflation. In fact, they'll tell you you're imagining it. Yeah, they really will. Because aliens like gaslighting people. They like trying to persuade you that you're, you're crazy. You, you're not getting it. You don't see it. And so they'll tell you there's no inflation. It's just your attitude. When people say that, they're not people. They're aliens. They're from another planet. Um, here's another way. I'm giving you a lot of ways, right? Because aliens are everywhere. You run into them everywhere. And no matter where you are, you really need to identify them. I mean, would you like to find yourself alone in a bus with a zombie? You wouldn't, right? Because you, you need to be able to recognize zombies. Well, you don't have to worry so much about zombies. But you do have to worry about aliens. And another way to uh, spot aliens is... They hate Christian charities that really solve problems. Charities like uh, Samaritan's Purse or World Vision. Aliens hate that. They really like scam charities like uh, Black Lives Matter. And they'll arrange for lots of money to go to Black Lives Matter, which money then gets scammed. And they'll put up signs on their lawns and in their windows Black Lives Matter. But they don't even really believe that because they don't really have any interest in trying to stop black lives that are taken by Muslims. That's right. There are many parts of the world, not just Nigeria, where people with black skins are being killed by people of the Muslim religion. Does this worry aliens? Not at all. No. You've got to spot these little subtleties in alien life. Aliens come from a planet that claims to follow science, yet back in 2020 they in and 21, they insisted on people being forced to endure multiple vaccines.
and boosters. Even after it was clearly established, scientifically I might tell you, that these Pfizer and other vaccines neither prevent you getting COVID, nor do they prevent you transmitting COVID. And nonetheless, they went to great lengths to demonize anybody who did not buy into the mythology, the anti-scientific mythology of vaccinations for COVID. That was, that was aliens, another way you spot them. In the name of science, they applauded the ban on ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. If you are unfortunate enough to have as your doctor an alien, he wouldn't be able to prescribe you. Let's say you wanted hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin to help you with COVID, your alien doctor wouldn't give it to you. And if you have a non-alien doctor, the aliens did everything they could to penalize doctors who didn't tow the official alien line about COVID. That's really what was happening. So even though ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine were scientifically proven to work, aliens didn't want you to have them. They made it almost impossible for you to get them. Aliens are 1,000% certain beyond any shadow of a doubt that unaided materialistic Darwinian evolution took place 3,000 million years ago. That they know beyond a shadow of a doubt. But they really aren't sure whether at an athletic meet last week, a six foot three, 200 pound guy competes against women in a swimming final and he says he's a female even though every bodily indication shows that he's a male and every cell in his body has an XY, has XY chromosomes. Nonetheless, aliens can't tell. They can tell what happened 3,000 million years ago. Oh yeah, unaided materialistic Darwinian evolution. Absolutely. But if you ask them to identify whether the person in front of you is a man or a woman, that they can't do. And, um, and, and we're, 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 we're reaching the end of the list because by now you should be able to identify aliens. But, but here's another very useful tip, which I have found extremely helpful in, in knowing um, which are the aliens from another planet and which are people with the potential of becoming happy warriors if they aren't already happy warriors. Happy warriors, we tend to see ourselves as most tied to the smallest units of our association. I don't know a better way to define it, so let me explain. Happy warriors tend to find most identification in our association with the smaller units of our society. Not so aliens. Happy warriors are mostly we find our identity with our families and our extended families and the folks we know from work and maybe the neighborhood. Maybe there's a little league game we're involved in or, or maybe there's a, a, a PTA or maybe there's a rotary club locally. That's what we do. And maybe our county, we go to the county fair, maybe the state. But we're a lot less interested in the federal government. And we certainly are not fans of the World Health Organization, the um, International Monetary Fund, the United Nations. But with aliens, it's exactly the other way around. They are not that into families. As a matter of fact, in general, Aliens are pretty much against family, against marriage, against having children. 
Some of them do anyway, so you can't count on that. But aliens find the most meaning by their associations with the largest units of the world. They love the United Nations. They love the World Health Order. They'll say all the time, aliens said during the COVID scare, aliens spoke all the time. Well, the WHO recommends. I never cared about what the WHO recommends. I wasn't interested in that. The United Nations says, United Nations dragged Israel to the, the world court on a charge of genocide because of South Africa's... Really, who cares? Like, what does that mean? It's silliness. But to aliens, it's hugely important. And so um, you, you, you almost get the feeling that aliens have contempt. Aliens have disdain for local, smaller units of society, like family and like Little League and like uh, the local PTA. Um, and aliens like your local school round the corner to be run by the Federal Department of Education. I don't. No happy warriors do. In fact, we don't understand why there is a Federal Department of Education. It was started in 1979. What on earth can a department made up of bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. tell me or any of the people in my neighborhood about what sort of school we should have? We know what sort of school we want. In 1979, you know who brought in the department, the Federal Department of Education? President Jimmy Carter. Another alien! <laughs> That's right! See, it's all falling into place. So, uh, aliens always think they know better than non-aliens about how everybody should live. Remember I said aliens are not live and let live. We are live and let live. They are much more dangerous because they are not live and let live. They are more like live as we command you to live. That's kind of pretty much how they work it. And um, remember that aliens, they never get their hands dirty. If you see somebody with dirt at the end of the day, five o'clock, you see somebody driving home from work and you see his hands on the wheels and he's got grease or he's got dirt under his fingernails, I guarantee you, not an alien. No. But if the hands are manicured, the fingernails are manicured, manicured, and they're men, probably aliens, most likely. Uh, most of them work with ideas, not with things. They, aliens tend to work in the following kind of areas. They work for governments or government organizations or non-profit organizations or uh, NGOs or uh, they work in law, they work in finance, they work in journalism, they work in media, uh, they work in academia, they work in education, they work in publishing. That's kind of where aliens tend to hang out. Now, there are lots of good, happy warriors who work in those fields as well. Don't make any mistake about that. But they're, in other words, happy warriors work everywhere. Happy warriors work with things, with ideas, with people. But aliens tend to work mostly with ideas. And um, that is not a good thing. I'll tell you why. Because things tend to help remind you on a daily basis of how the world really works. Um, we uh, were very big, and are very big, on building blocks for children. Even before there were iPads, um, they used to have videos, VHS videos, and then DVD videos. And many was the parent who bought a few minutes of peace and quiet by plunking the child in front of a screen. And God bless Mrs. Lappin. She never, ever did that. And one of our big fallbacks was these beautiful, this, this is maple wood. It's solid. You know, it's, it's fairly, I mean, you drop a, a little block of maple wood, you know, <laughs> you can tell. And uh, 
they they they're generally um, sanded and planed, and they're they're square. And they, if you put them on edge, they stand. You can put them on edge, they stand. And um, one of the things that uh, that maple building blocks help you that a screen don't. Even if you're a little kid, you try and put a great big uh, building block on a little one, and it's not very stable. It tends to fall over. See, I I still like playing with building blocks. They they're just they're satisfying. They're tactile, and there's a way to make them work. If you if you want to build up a tower, it's probably not a good idea to start with real little ones, you know, and then put bigger ones on top and bigger ones then on top of that. And sure enough, sorry about that, it just doesn't work that well. So one of the way, things that maple building blocks teach you is that there is a way to build block towers. Not every way works as well as any other way. And so you either want to have somebody teach you or you want to gain experience because not everything you can think of works. Little kids say, oh, I think I'll do it like this. Guess what? He only tries to do that a few times. And I remember watching children learn as they do this. You'll see them trying to do ridiculous things. Doesn't work. Then they stop doing that. Then they start doing it right and they can start building things. On a child level, that's what maple wood building blocks do. On an adult level, working with things keeps reminding you that the world of reality, the material world in which we live, has limits and restrictions. You can't do whatever you want. But people who exist and operate and work and live only in the world of ideas like aliens, they never think that maybe this isn't a good idea. Because as soon as they think of it, it is a good idea. And so aliens come up with ideas like universal basic income. Hey, let's give everybody a thousand dollars a month. And they actually have to try it in order to see that it doesn't work. And even so, they won't quickly give up on it. Redistribution of wealth. High tax the rich. All these good bromides they talk of all the time. It's aliens talking because they are unaware that in every aspect of reality there are limits, restrictions, and restraints. You can't do anything. Not everything you think of is going to work out well. And the nice thing about Happy Warriors is that we do not get intoxicated with our own ideas because we always weigh them up against reality because our mantra is remembering how the world really works. Now, I, I did a show um, a little while back explaining that uh, people constantly say, well, this is the end. This is the end of the world. No, we're not going to be able to, this is the end. And I explained that uh, you, you don't have to worry. End of the world, not coming so quickly. It's fine. Even though people say, oh, it's the end of the world. Well, as the final public service for today, main public service was teaching you how to identify aliens. But, and you just got to recognize they're from another planet. They think differently. They see things differently. They behave differently. And if they get power over you, your life will become worse, not better. That's just a general rule. You do not want aliens to be in charge of you. William F. Buckley, the late William F. Buckley, a friend and a great um, American, um, famously said that he'd rather be governed by the first 2,000 names in the Boston Telephone Directory than by the faculty of Harvard University. Well, I would be delighted to be governed by people who are tradesmen. You want to set up a group of people to have to, to govern my world? Make sure that they are framers, crane operators, uh, mechanics, um, riggers, welders, construction people, uh, architects, designers. Yep, that, that, that would work well. God forbid that I should ever be governed by intellectuals and by aliens. Very often, exactly the same. A remote and distant form of planetary life. 
So the world is not coming to an end. I assure you the world is not coming to an end. No matter what's going on, the world is not coming to an end. But unfortunately, this show today is. And so I wish you a week of wonderful growth with your families, your finances, your friendships, your faith, and your physical fitness. I'm Rabbi Daniel Lappin. God bless.